So check this out. Now, that's a Nord lead. If I click on it, I see that it goes out of port and it gets one channel. One channel is kind of lame. Um, but, you know, the Nord lead actually takes four channels. Uh, you can actually have four assignable channels. I happen to know that because uh, I think Nord leads are rad. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to kill it. Now, under new, I have something called multi instrument. This multi instrument is basically uh, a way of sending multiple channels to the same device on the same port. Now, when I say port, I mean the physical MIDI port attached to your system. So I'm going to open up these four channels. So that means that this instrument has the ability to receive four different channels of information. So if this was a if this was a um, sample based thing, like one could be a bass, two could be drums, three could be a lead sound, and four could be a flute, right? So I'm going to click here. When you click at the top, it selects the instrument as a whole. When I click on these, it's selecting the individual channels and opening them. Okay, so I'm going to click here, and under multi instrument, I'm going to call this. Nord lead. Okay, now if I go to the arrange window, see we have Nord lead, right? Now if I hold control and click, reassign track object, MIDI instrument, Nord lead, then I get the four channels of the Nord lead, and then I actually have the ability to send to all of the channels of the Nord lead at once if I choose this. Okay, so there's channel one, right? Now if I want to, I can actually, sorry about that, I can actually create under track new with next MIDI channel. Okay, so this is shift command return, right? Now you see it, it, it started over again, it says four. That's because we ran out of channels. Okay, so this would be an example we have the instrument set up so that it's receiving four different channels. Okay. Now let's get back to screen set eight. All right. So have a Nord lead. Let's say that I don't even want the option to send to all of the channels. When I select here, you can see that these are changing. All of these parameters are changing according to the channel that I have. So if I come here and turn this program volume pan, program volume pan, program volume pan, program volume pan. So on instru on the channel one, maybe I want this to be a bright piano. Maybe this will be dulcimer. Maybe this will be uh, something else. Now what's great is that when I go back to the arrange window, the Nord lead, if I choose to, uh, this will actually show the name of the program that is assigned here. I actually have to go here and go view, configure track header, and then tell it uh, there we go, software instrument setting name. Okay, so once again that was under view, configure track header, software instrument setting name. Okay. That way we can actually see the uh, see the name of the uh, instrument that we're playing. So that's pretty cool. Now, isn't it amazing that Logic automatically knew what the sounds names were, what the sound names were in the Nord lead, in the, blah, 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 in the Nord lead, right? So it's got a bright piano and dulcimers. And, wait a minute, dulcimer, bright piano, the Nord lead doesn't have any of that stuff. I'm gonna go back to screen set eight. Okay, I just touched eight. Here's the deal. Basically, Logic will automatically assume that a multi-instrument that you create is a general MIDI instrument. If it's not a general MIDI instrument, then uh, just double-click on any one of these channels, and it pulls up the instrument list. Okay, this is the, basically the name list, uh, the names of all the patches that are within this uh, synth. But this synth is not general MIDI. It's proprietary. It's the Nord lead from Clavia. It's got all kinds of cool synth sounds, but these are not the synth sounds. These are general MIDI names. So what I'm going to do is under options, I'm going to say cut all names. Now they're just numbers. Okay? Program 0, 1, 2, 3, etc., etc. 
Now if I want to, I can actually name them by hand. I'll double click and I'll call this uh, synth1 return and uh, oh wow they don't do that anymore. But that's too bad. Uh, I have to double click and say synth2 and then double click and say this would be a real pain in the well you get the idea so synth 1, synth 2 and then of course this would be a real pain so if you actually had to enter all of the names by hand wouldn't that be miserable um, I'm gonna give you guys a little gift today and uh, if you go to um, well, I'll, I'll get to that in a second. But So this is where you would put your patch names in, and then if you needed to give it a bank change number that was um, different from, uh, like, not standard, um, all your bank change messages are here. Control 32 is very common, but if you have something like Yamaha or Alesis or something like that, they might have a slightly uh, different bank message. What does bank message mean? Well, essentially... Um, MIDI is always 0 to 127, always. So if you have more than 127 instruments in your synth, then you have to create bank numbers. Guess how many banks there are? 127. So in any given synthesizer, you can have 127 banks of 127 sounds. But everything is in a range of 0 to 127. That's just one of the parameters of MIDI. Now, if I go back to the arrange window, Okay, once again, if you want to rename patches, you just double click here, double click, and then you just rename them. Now, what's great is that if you go back to the arrange window, and then once again, I'm just hitting one, um, we'll see that this says this, right? And if I click over here and I get my program numbers, synth one, two, this would be a real pain in the, and then ten. So, now I can select those by name instead of just by number, and they're not propri they're not these arbitrary general MIDI names. Okay. Now that being said, let's go back to screen set eight. Wouldn't that be a pain in the ass um, if every time you wanted to make a synth? Well, actually, before I go into that, um, this is just a standard MIDI icon. That's kind of boring. If I click and hold, I get all of the icons that are built into Logic. So. Um, just just for fun I'm gonna I'm gonna choose a little keyboard that'll be fun change yeah that's sweet there we go that's nice uh, it's very sim I think it might actually be the same icon that was there before but you know I don't know maybe I'll do something silly make it a tree or something yeah there we go that's uh, my Nord lead tree very cute okay so if you want to change these pictures you just go here and you click on the icon and you can change it to whatever. Then like, you know, MIDI channel 4 wants to be different. I can click and hold and I can say, uh, I'll make it this kind of a synth. That's cool. Anyway, they're just icons. They don't mean anything. They're just pictures. Okay. So, now, um, first things first. I'm going to do screen today. I'm definitely splitting this lesson up, so I'm just going to keep going. Um, So it would be a pain to have to enter all this stuff by hand. Um, one thing you can do is you can download text files. Um, I actually have, if I go, I'm going to go back to my YouTube notes. 